One storm is gone, but another is headed our way. It's already raining in some areas. We'll have a live report straight ahead. High winds created whiteout conditions in the Sierra. Today we'll have a report from the mountains. Governor Wilson was sworn in today with some poignant words about the direction the Golden State is headed. And a rookie running back scores three times, adding an exclamation point to a satisfying afternoon at the stick. Those stories all the news on this Saturday night, January 7th, 1995. Live from KTVU, this is the award-winning 10 o'clock news on Channel 2, the number one primetime newscast in the country. Good evening, I'm Leslie Griffith. It is one down and two to go. The second of three storms forecast for this weekend is just offshore, but the leading edge of that storm is already spreading rain to parts of the Bay Area. Diane Dwyer is in the Marin Headlands with a live report for us. Diane. Leslie, well, as you can see, the winds have already picked up here at the Marin Headlands. The rain's sort of been off and on most of the night, but the heavy rains are expected in just about an hour or two. The storm right now is just off the coast. So far, the storm has provided some light showers, but the forecasters say that will all change when the heart of the storm hits us. This round is expected to last longer and bring more rain with it than last night's storm. There are high wind and surf advisories issued, and many people have sandbags ready in case of flooding. And that is only the beginning of the problems. In the South Bay, this huge oak tree took out a driveway, a lawn, a fence, and a power line when it keeled over from the wind and rain this morning. Power was out for hours to much of the neighborhood near Pierce Road in Saratoga. And they weren't alone. PG&E reports that a total of 200,000 people lost power overnight in an area stretching from Mendocino to Monterey to the Sierra foothills. PG&E says it has called in all available crews Throughout the day, workers restored power to most areas and are now prepared to work through yet another night if necessary. At the coast, surfers flocked to the ocean this afternoon to take advantage of the high waves. However, swells are expected to reach 30 feet and the Coast Guard is warning the public to use extreme caution when in or near the surf. And for the first time in more than a decade, Coast Guard officials closed the entrance to the bay, barring all ships from entering or exiting the bay for five hours overnight because of the rough conditions. On the Bay Bridge, officials issued a high wind advisory recording gusts of up to 65 miles an hour. The wet, windy weather also caused dozens of accidents over the past 24 hours. This one on 880 northbound in Oakland happened at 2.30 this afternoon. One of the drivers said he put on the brakes but just slid for about 100 feet. It was the rain, it was the wet weather. We weren't going to stop. Across the highway, southbound 880, there was yet another crash at nearly the same time. No one was seriously hurt in either accident, but the family in this van was rattled. He was uh, traveling too fast in the rain, or the, actually the wet roadway that had stopped raining, and he was traveling at a speed, and the cars ahead of him were slowing. He was unable to stop and lost control. Now, last night's storm dumped about two inches of rain in Marin County and nearly three inches of rain in Santa Cruz. And we're not going to have much of a break for the next few days either. After this storm passes through the Bay Area, another one is right on its heels. It's expected in either tomorrow night or early Monday morning. Now, once again, Leslie, we're expecting heavy rains to start in about an hour or two and last all night. All right, Diane. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. More than two feet of new snow fell around Lake Tahoe overnight. Caltrans closed Interstate 80 twice today, and chain requirements are being enforced tonight. But the big problem is the wind. Gusts have been clocked up to 100 miles an hour. Mark Schumacher reports. The wind isn't blowing or gusting, it's thrashing, knocking some skiers over, forcing still more to sit down and wait out the clouds of whipped snow. You can't see at all in front of you. So you just kind of ski, crash, get up, and do it again. Even old glory is stressed. It's the first time I've skied in three years. This is the first time. It's killing me. Funny thing, though, Squaw Valley and most resorts were crowded with skiers all day. 
How'd they get here? We heard something about a window yesterday between 12 and 4 o'clock. That was yesterday when most of these skiers made it up the mountain. Without four wheel drive, have to change on This morning and for much of the day, it hasn't been so easy. Ice left many, like the driver of this big rig, stuck. Whiteouts slowed everyone else, occasionally shutting down Interstate 80. Mark Duca spent the night waiting in Applegate. When did you finally get on the road and be able to leave Applegate, and what's it been like since? Uh, about 6.30, and it's moving all right, but it's getting thicker. As the snow got heavier, so did plow traffic. Caltrans is doing what it can to keep things clear with yet another storm approaching. But the long line of cars waiting for 80 to reopen this afternoon point to what will probably be another long night. In Truckee, I'm Mark Schumacher for the 10 o'clock news. It has been raining for several days in Southern California, and this latest storm just added to the problems there, particularly hard hit. Parts of Los Angeles and Orange counties already under a state of emergency. Andrew Warren reports. By midday, this storm dumped another two inches of rain on the Southland. High surf battered the coastline, and rain cascaded down the already saturated hills in the burn areas near Topanga Canyon. One lady got stuck crossing Topanga Creek near PCH. Teams drive across, this thing picks up real fast. I mean, within minutes, it's uh, rising within feet, 30 seconds, sometimes. When the tow truck driver refused to go in, neighbor Kurt Armand uh, went to the rescue. I've got to be the hero this morning. Hopefully I don't wash down with a creek. Wading through the current, Armand wrapped a chain around the front bumper to winch the truck on shore. Have you done your good deed for the day? Uh, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> Mudslides closed one lane along Pacific Coast Highway around Las Virginas Canyon. Caltrans crews were kept busy clearing roads and drains of mud and debris. The biggest concern today is to just to keep all the drains clear that we got clear and try and open up ones that we still have plugged. It's like the dozer that's over in the hole over here, and, you know, as long as we keep him in there and keep moving material, we can stay ahead of this drain and it's not going to plug up. After Wednesday night's storm, this tunnel was almost completely full with mud and rocks, and bulldozer crews have been working around the clock in 12-hour shifts to keep it clear. So the runoff flows under PCH and not over it. Preparation and sandbagging by residents paid off this time. There were only a few reports of minor flooding along the coast, mostly in garages, not homes. This storm brought consistent rain, not the deluge of last week. And most of the damage was done on slick roads in traffic. More rain over the next few days is expected to wreak even more havoc on the already waterlogged Southland. In Malibu, Andrew Warren. Fox News. Most people tried to weather today's storm by staying inside, but thousands had a very good reason to go out in today's rain, and they did. The reason? The 49ers. Jim Vargas reports. Second and goal from the two. Touchdown, William Floyd. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Oh, the score was just fine, but 49er fans came to Candlestick today prepared for torrential rains. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. It's not easy putting up or dismantling shelters, and today's gusting wind didn't help tailgaters any. Well, it's sort of like, you, you know, you make a capital investment to use it, right? Regardless if it's going to rain or not. The overnight rainstorm is what caused fans' problems. In the main parking lot, which is paved, only about 200 spaces were lost to flooding, according to the man who owns the parking concession. But the dirt lots across the street were a muddy mess. The parking lot operator says he was lucky only to lose 2,400 spaces there. If it had rained all morning, he could have lost closer to 6,000 spaces. Well, we got lucky today. We didn't get a lot of rain, and we had a lot of wind, which helps. It dried everything out, and the water's running off, the tide's going out. Which also helps a lot, since some areas of the parking lots are eight feet below sea level, Leonidaka says. But as any fan who says they're a real fan will tell you, they'd be willing to put up with a lot worse to see the 49ers. If it comes down, we're going to be ready for it. <laughs> you know? Just always planning for the worst. But we're diehard 49er fans, and we wouldn't miss it because of a little rain. This weather bother you, the wind, the mud, 
Not really, not when you come to see a 49ers win. <laughs> the high winds that swept around Candlestick didn't seem to bother the fans any more than they bothered the team. And when it did start to rain in the second quarter, it may have come down hard, but not for long. At least the 60,000 fans didn't leave. In fact, across town at the bus stop bar, we found one man who felt cheated. He wasn't at the game. I should be there, actually. Go Raiders! Yeah, we had season tickets. But the guy we got him from screwed us for the playoffs. On the other hand, there are some advantages to not being at the game. They stopped selling beers at halftime at Candlestick, and they can get beers the whole game here, so... <laughs> Bathroom's a lot closer. And anyone who's ever been to a game at Candlestick can appreciate that last comment. In San Francisco, Jim Vargas for the 10 o'clock news. 44 to 15 was your final score. Stick around, we'll have the highlights for you coming up. But first, California's governor starts his second term. We will have a report from the state capitol and we'll show you what a camera recorded when the earth suddenly moved today. You take a break all for the wash. If you need me, I'll be leaving. Kids can act very nice when there's something they want. Would you like your fuzzy slippers? And that's okay if what they want is very, very kicks. It's got real fruit juice added, natural fruit flavors, and less sugar than most sweetened cereals. If it's very, very kicks, you can say okay. This is exactly what I wanted. Warner Brothers proudly presents Christian Slater. Are you guilty of the murder of Rufus McCain? Kevin Bacon. I was a weapon, but I ain't no killer. And Gary Oldman. I will not be treated the same way as this two-time loser! Based on the true story that brought down Alcatraz. They will eat you for breakfast. I'll play hardball too. You created the murderer, didn't you? What the hell you think you're doing with this trial? I'm trying to do what's right. I'm talking about justice here. Murder in the First. Rated R. Starts Friday, January 20th at a theater near you. I'm Ryan Van Miller in Washington. What a week it's been here politically. But what does it mean for you in the Bay Area? We'll find out tonight at 10.30 on The Money. Hello, man. Lunch before you leap, huh? Cheddar cheese. Jack. Jack cheese. Jack. Rolled with turkey and a pickle spear. Pickle spear. All right, mind if I join you? No problem. All right. <laughs> cheese, good fast food from the makers of milk. Aha, fellow party animals. What are we serving this evening? Olives over cottage cheese. Very healthy. Salsa. Ooh, I love salsa. <laughs> well, hello there. Cottage cheese. Good fast food from the makers of milk. People ask, how can I remember to dial 1-800-COLLECT when I call collect? For me, this fee outfit did the trick. But for most folks, just knowing 1-800-COLLECT saves people up to 44% should suffice. The 1-800-COLLECT Fox Sports Virtual Reality Tour is at San Francisco's Pier 39. 3D movies, virtual reality gyroscope rides, video games, it's all free. The Virtual Reality Tour starts Monday at Pier 39. This is KTVU, Channel 2, your Fox affiliate in the Bay Area. Pete Wilson took the oath of office today and began his second term as governor. 3,000 people filled the Sacramento Convention Center for Wilson swearing in. After taking the oath, Wilson delivered an inaugural address that one observer described as stern. Tom Marshall reports. I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. The duties upon which I am about to enter. The governor's inaugural speech seemed to have one eye on his agenda for his second term, with perhaps the other eye roving toward running for president in 1996. For instance, Pete Wilson on welfare reform. We will make clear that welfare is to be a safety net, not a hammock, and absolutely not a permanent way of life. Pete Wilson on education reform. Why have schools that reward poor teachers for promoting and even graduating students who can't adequately speak and write English? Pete Wilson on illegal immigration. Why should federal law reward illegal immigrants for violating the law? And Wilson is clearly hitting the right Republican buttons, but would he bail out in 96 for the White House? His priorities being governor, and this is a job he's always wanted, as everybody. I've been his chief of staff for 27 years. I can tell you he loves this job. As he's weighing the factors about running for president, that he, he will know that there's a lot of outstanding 
uh, Republican leaders in the state uh, who could follow him in, into the governor's office. Actually, Democrat Lieutenant Governor Gray Davis would be the first in line, making him a roadblock to those plans. Some people say I've already earned my salary just by being here. How about it, Governor? Are you going to run? I'm going to run for your microphone. In Sacramento, I'm Tom Marshall for the 10 o'clock news. And news of the world tonight, in Chechnya, shells rained down in the heart of the capital of Grozny, igniting fires that burned at the presidential palace and several apartment buildings. The Russian general in charge of the campaign reportedly died in the attack. The Red Cross says the eight-day assault has left several thousand people dead or wounded and some 350,000 refugees. In Japan, a trio of earthquakes have injured at least 30 people and caused at least one death. Officials also report substantial property damage. The first quake, as we told you last night, measured 6.9 on the Richter scale and it was centered 370 miles northeast of Tokyo. A 6.2 magnitude quake hit that same area four hours later. A third quake was centered 60 miles north of Tokyo with a preliminary magnitude of 5.2. In Bosnia, Orthodox Serbs celebrated Christmas today under the old Julian calendar. Politicians and civilians alike observed the holiday by lighting candles and praying for peace. The United Nations calls the latest truce between Bosnian Serbs and Muslims, quote, fragile. Emergency talks are scheduled for tomorrow. O.J. Simpson is reportedly coming out with a book of his own. The Sunday edition of the New York Times says that the book is in response to the huge volume of mail that Simpson has received in recent months. In the book, Simpson says he did not kill his ex-wife. It is titled, I Want to Tell You. The Times says that the book is due out next month. Still to come tonight, we'll have the official National Weather Service rain forecast for the days ahead. We'll also tell you about a horrifying discovery today at this condominium complex in New York. And bring on the Packers or the Cowboys. The hometown team is just one game away from Super Sunday. And it's picked off by Eric Davis. a better way to wake up. Mornings on 2, weekdays 7 to 9. Mornings on 2, it'll change the way you start your whole day. The search continues. Perhaps one day, the eternal question will be answered. What do you want to do tonight? Make it a blockbuster night. He thought they had everything, but she had everything to hide. James Spader, Mitchum Anik, Dream Lover. From Polygram Video, Rated R. So you want a big screen TV, but your wife doesn't want a big box in the living room? Great news. The Sony 46-inch Videoscope TV is as slim as an ordinary 25-inch TV. It's even slimmer than your average football fan. Yet the Sony picture is three times bigger. So the impact is huge. No wonder it's the official big screen TV of the NFL. And make 1995 your biggest year ever because every big screen is on sale. The good guys. Police in New York City are investigating a mass murder tonight after officers discovered six bodies inside a condominium. Today, officers in the borough of Queens responded after a woman with her throat cut jumped from a second-story window, and neighbors called 911. The woman pointed police to the condo where they found the bodies of four women and two men 
Some had been shot, others stabbed. Police say that they know of no motive and they have no suspects. The woman who escaped the condo is in critical condition and unable to talk to police because of her wound. As we have been telling you, California's so-called storm door is wide open this weekend, although conditions have been relatively calm in the Bay Area so far tonight. Weather watchers anticipate heavy rain, strong winds, and the possibility of local flooding and possible mudslides. Tonight's forecast calls for wind and rain with temperatures from the mid-40s to the low 50s. There is a possibility of isolated thunderstorms. Winds are from the south. They're gusting up to 45 miles per hour. Look for scattered showers and gusty southern winds again tomorrow with highs from the mid 50s to the mid 60s. A smaller storm is due in tomorrow night and according to the National Weather Service still another storm system is expected by midweek. So I guess William Floyd is probably the happiest man <laughs> in the Bay Area tonight. A little pooped out celebrating yeah, so much. So. Yeah, only 25 yards rushing but some very valuable real estate you might say. Yes, the 49ers dominated, just as everyone predicted. And the quarterback, Steve Young, rushed for 32 yards himself, compared to just 39 for the entire Chicago Bears team. And by halftime, the only real question still unanswered was, who would the new WWF tag team of Rice and Young challenge next? It was wet and wild at the stick, and, oh, Dad, go home. Weather conditions not really a factor, although it did start out like the Niners had the slippery hand. Second play from scrimmage, Brent Jones, whoops. Bears recover and get a field goal out of it, but not to worry. Niners beat the Bears at their own game, just ramming it down their throat. That's William Floyd, his first of three calls to glory. Oof, 7-3, Bears. Steve Walsh, though, uh, was picked off twice. One set up a chance for Steve Young to give Brent Jones a vote, vote of confidence. 13-3, Niners, as Niners missed the extra point. 49ers offensive line moved more people than Van Ally, Allied Van Lines. Is that the company? Yeah, I thought so. Bar none, again. 49ers running for 145 yards today. They scored 23 points in the second quarter alone, but here we go. Steve Young with a sprint, one foot in, and Sean Gale, boom! Watch Young's reaction. In your face. But how about Jerry Rice? He comes barreling in. But let's remember, guys, you're all wearing helmets, okay? The final blow, though, second half, and here's Floyd. And I'm telling you, he's getting tired of all this celebration. Let's give old Steve Wallace a chance to shine. And, and look, Here's as awkward That's as my prom night. Last year Come on. Yeah, there you go. 44 4 15 is your final. Niners did their part. Now Dallas needs to beat the Packers tomorrow to set up the big one. That game, by the way, seen at 9.30 here on Channel 2. But back to those roughnecks, Rice and Young. Well, we have to protect our uh, livelihood. You know, this guy is uh, the guy that's going to get us over the hump. And honestly, I, I think I really surprised a lot of guys today, you know, because they're like, wow, you know, they came up they, and they started congratulating me. I'm like, just like I had um, uh, won a bout or something like that. But I, but I tell you what, it worked in our favor because of the way that people reacted. This team is, is possessed. And that makes me feel good. I feel like we're ready to go do it. That doesn't guarantee anything. But like I said, the field is lined, ready to go. We're, we'll be here next Sunday. Rough and ready, but today's AFC semifinal featured the Steelers with their terrible towels, while the Cleveland Browns looked like they threw their towels in early. The Steelers rushed for 238 yards against Cleveland. That's backup fullback John L. Williams ripping for a 26-yard TD. Browns' Bill Belichick knew he'd be losing to the Steelers for the third straight time this season. Vinny Testaverde picked off eight times in three games. And that's X-49 and Tim McKay are picking one off. And that's set up. Neil O'Donnell's little flip to Yancey Thigpen. That's it. Time to party. That was over quick. 29-9. Pittsburgh's first home playoff victory in 10 years. They'll now host the winner of tomorrow's Miami-San Diego game. And when we come back, college hoops as Stanford looks to stay undefeated. And the Cal Bears try to come back from Thursday's loss by putting the Huskies in the doghouse. And Gonzalez has one thing you have to really like. Because MCI presents the AT&T True-False Quiz. True or false? AT&T always saves you money. False. Millions pay. Boy, do they pay. It just doesn't ring true. Emporium's three-day sale. Save on everything that's right for you. Find the look that fits you best. Bring a good friend and catch some great buys. There's a store full of possibilities. Savings for every occasion or for no occasion at all. 
you can't miss. No matter where you look, you're sure to find something with a little zip, a little flair, a little attitude. The three-day sale, Friday 9 to 10, Saturday 9 to 9, Sunday 10 to 7 at Emporium. Family to family. KTVU's commitment to the community continues in partnership with the people of Chevron. Because of winter colds and flu, the Bay Area continues to experience a blood shortage. The supply of all blood types is very low. Eligible donors of all blood types are urgently needed. Watch for the Bloodmobile where you live or work, or call your local blood bank today. For further information, call 1-800-864-4835. Victoria, when you're ready for real salsa. MCI presents the AT&T True False Quiz. True or false? Every AT&T customer saves with True USA. False. 20 million customers won't save a dime. It just doesn't ring true. Seven-year-old Nicole Farley was just a baby when she and her mother were hit by a drunk driver. Nicole was paralyzed from the chest down. Thanks to Shriners Hospital, she's gained confidence and independence. We've found that at Shriners, they don't just treat the child, they treat the whole family. With the tools they've given us, Nicole will be able to lead a normal, fulfilling life. Nicole's treatment and the treatment of thousands like her is made possible by the East-West Shrine Game. Be a part of football's finest hour. This was the first week that both Stanford and Cal men were ranked in the top 25 at the same time, and the Cardinal were just one of four Division I teams still undefeated until they got pulled down in Pullman. And love those Washington State cheerleaders. Oh, Members of the Crayola set, I think they are. But the uh, Cardinal Young, seven foot one freshman Tim Young struggles, but manages to find Dion Cross. Cross with a long ball. Both Dion and Young scored 15 tonight. But the Cougars led by seven in intermission, then open up the second with a 15-5 run. Dominic Ellison scoring all 12 of his points in that second half. But it's Shaman Antrim. Shaman Antrim, a game high 19 points. Cougs dump their second straight ranked team, 83-71. The 10-1 Cardinal got just four points out of aching star Brevin Knight. They host Arizona State Thursday. Meanwhile, in Seattle, it's Simon's coach and Warriors next opponent, Jim Rat, George Carl, watching the Cal Bears, dog and the Huskies. Cal playing with Alfred Alfred Grigsby. They rely on tight end turn forward Tony Gonzalez. Tony, 14 for him tonight. Cal still stinging from Thursday's loss in Pullman. They get a big game from Monty Buckley. Team high nine rebounds and a career high 26 points for Monty. Bears on a 14-2 run, but the only guy they couldn't stop was big Mike Amos. Amos led the Huskies with eight rebounds, 19 points, but it doesn't sell in Seattle. Look at Gonzalez down inside, then a nice outlet to K.J. Roberts for three. Thank you very much. It doesn't for K.J. 84, 76, and Todd Bozeman's got to be happy because the Bears make 41 of 50, 50 free throws compared to just 12 of 32 in Thursday's loss. Other Pac-10 games. Oregon joins Wazoo as the only 2-0 schools in UCLA. Beats the Beavers. West Coast Conference action. It's USF going down while Santa Clara comes up a big winner. And in women's scores, it's Stanford keeping on rolling and Lady Bears can't contain 14th ranked Washington. The NHL Board of Governors have drawn a new line in the ice, revoking the players' newest proposal and countering with their own final plan, also telling players they have until noon Tuesday to accept it or the entire season is canceled. And quickly, here's your NBA winners. Hope your favorite team is one of them. Indiana, Phoenix, Portland, Charlotte, Cleveland, Atlanta, Utah, the Spurs, and the Kings. That's sports, and that's it, and I'm out of here. Okay, bring on those Packers or those Cowboys. We're you ready. It. Thank you, Fred. That's our report for tonight. Thank you for joining us. For everyone here at KTVU, I'm Leslie Griffith on The Money with Brian Miller is coming up next. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.